Hey there and welcome to Baiju's 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your biology teacher Aishwarya and I welcome you to our channel. Now in this video we are going to be learning about a certain concept from the chapter crop production and management and today in this video we will be talking about harvesting, storage and we will also be learning about animal husbandry. So I hope all of you here are excited for this particular video. Now of course when we talk about the chapter crop production and management it primarily deals around the concept of agriculture. Now what is agriculture? It is nothing but the practice of growing crops and rearing livestock at a large scale and the purpose being so that we produce food at a large scale. Now of course when we talk about cultivation of crops we know that it's not a one-step process but rather there are various agricultural practices that are incorporated. So step number one of course is to prepare the soil, make sure that it's loosened and turned so that there's proper amount of aeration and the nutrients are well mixed. Followed by which we sow the seeds in an equidistant manner. After which if additional nutrients need to be added, we also add them in the form of manure or fertilizers. And of course, main step is to make sure that water is provided by the process of irrigation. Now of course we allow our seeds to grow or our crops to grow. Now as our crops are growing, we also see that at times maybe some unwanted plants may grow along with it that will compete with our crop for food nutrients. Now this is not a good sign, right? Because this can hamper the yield of crops, which is why we need to remove these unwanted plants or what we understand as weeds. And this process of removal of weeds is what we call as weeding. So with this, of course, after completing till step number five, we have allowed our crops to grow. Now, of course, eventually at one point, our crops will be fully grown or they will be fully mature. And that is when we move on to step number six, which is harvesting. Now, when our crops are fully grown or when they are mature, we are ready to cut it off or utilize them for our benefit. And this process of cutting, so let me write this down. So this process of cutting of matured crops is what we call as harvesting. Now, how can I obtain or how can I cut my matured crops? There are two ways of doing it. The simple way of doing it, of course, is to just directly pull the crop off from the soil, right? You just take it and you uproot it. The second way is, of course, to cut it close to the soil. So if this is my plant, right? So I'm just going to draw a rough plant. So if this is my plant, I will cut it close to the soil, but I will not uproot it, right? I will not pull it out directly, but rather I will cut it here. Now, how am I going to cut it? Well, of course, we have tools that will help us. And normally the Indian farmer that is there will use a sickle. It is an axe like instrument and we see that it has a crescent moon like structure which helps it helps us cut close to the soil and helps it cut from the bottom. Now what do we have with us? We have the whole plant with us which is matured and we have the whole crop with us. But now let me give you an example. Imagine I have grown rice. Now when I cut my matured crop, I have the whole plant with me. I have the stem and I have everything, right? But now do I want, you know, the stem and the leaves and everything together? What do I want when I'm cultivating rice? I am looking specifically for the greens, right? Because what is the part of the rice that we eat? We eat the grains of the plant. So now, of course, even though harvesting is done, we still have not got our end product, which is why some post-harvesting techniques are needed. And here are the two important post-harvesting techniques that we need to learn about is threshing and winnowing. Now, in the case of threshing, so threshing is a mechanical process wherein what you observe, you see that there is a farmer and he is hitting, right? As you can see, he is actually taking the whole plant or the whole crop crop and he is hitting it against a hard surface. Now he is doing this so that he can separate the grains right or I can say the seeds from the straw right. So the intent here is to separate the edible part of the plant from the straw or the husk right. So what we are getting here is you know we are getting our grains but of course there will also be some husk right which is the scaly hard outer covering of the grains. So we get a mixture of these two at the end of threshing. 
Now what is it? Have I got my final product yet? No, right? I've got some husk also which I don't want. I want to get rid of it. There's a lot of unwanted protective covering that I have got. Now this unwanted protective covering also needs to be separated out. So I do this with the help of winnowing. Now winnowing is separation of seeds from chaff. Now what is chaff? Now chaff is nothing but the dry, you know, casing of seeds or grains, which is normally what we refer to as husk. And we do this process of winnowing where from a distance, we sort of, you know, throw it to the ground, right? And we see that when we do this, there is separation of grain from husk because of difference in the density. Or you could say difference in their weight, right? Now we know that grains are more dense, right? So they fall directly downwards. While chaff that is there is light. So these tend to sort of fall apart or they tend to get separated out. So this is the principle that is there behind winnowing where finally we get the grains that we need. Now this of course is what we see as a manual method. And manual method of course comes with a lot of disadvantages because we know that there is high labor cost and of course this requires a lot of skill and along this process a lot of grains get damaged which is why we see that we off late we resort to industrial methods where we use machines right like combines which of course allows us to not only harvest but do the process of threshing at the same time. So here, of course, we see that right now the process of harvesting is taking place, followed by which threshing also happens where the separation from straw, uh, the separation of seeds from the straw happens, right? So this way we see that a lot of grains does not get damaged and we see that we get a large quantity with, you know, of course, less manual effort going into the whole picture. Now, of course, we know that when harvesting takes place, we have a lot of harvest festivals in our country. We celebrate this and different parts of the country have different harvest festivals. Like we celebrate Lori in Punjab, we have Pongal in Tamil Nadu, Makar Sankranti in Karnataka and of course Bihu in Assam. Yes. So with this, of course, we've understood the ideology behind harvesting. But now we saw that there was a lot of unwanted parts of the plant, like we grew the whole crop, but we have taken what is edible or what we require. What about the other parts, right? What happens to the residual part of the crop or the part of the crop that we do not require? What happens to that? So normally of late, we first and foremost call this residual part of the crop or the part of the crop that we don't require as stubble. Yes, and we see that normally they are burnt before the crop, next cropping cycle. So before they start to crop, you know, take up the next cropping cycle, they normally burn this residual part. Now this is not very ideal because it causes a lot of air pollution and of course it can damage crop fields. But of course we're trying to move on to better parts where we use the crops completely, right? We use every part of it to our benefit. So if we are cultivating crops at a large scale, it should not be that we're just growing it for one edible part, but rather we find better usage of the other parts so that we can be more sustainable. So with this, of course, we have understood harvesting. But now, of course, we see that I have produced at the end of harvesting, I've got a large amount of grains with me, right? I've got large amount of cultivated, you know, edible parts. So let's assume the grains example itself, right? I've got a large amount of grains. Now, there's only so much I can sell immediately, right? There's going to come a point when I'll have to figure out a way to keep all these grains, right? Or an efficient way of storing it. So storage of grains that is there is very important because after harvesting, the grains are stored for future use. Now, how can they be stored? They can either be stored in, you know, jute bags or metallic bins, right? So this is normally how grains are stored. But this also comes with a little bit of disadvantages if you just store it in sacks and metallic bins and you don't really put some thought into storage. Because first and foremost, they could be subject to attack by rats, right? So you have a lot of, you know, small animals which can, you know, feed on these grains. And along with that, a lot of pests or unwanted insects, maybe microorganisms slowly start to grow on it. So what do we do in such cases and how do we tackle it? So we see that there are certain storage challenges. Now, when we store something, there are few things to keep in mind. So we call them as pre-storage. That means before storing, what are the few things that I have to keep in mind? Or what are the precautions or the things that I will have to make sure that before I store, I do these, these, these things. 
So in the case to tackle the growth of microorganisms like bacteria or fungi, we add neem to the sacs, right? Along with the grains, we add neem. Now this is very important because neem that is there has a lot of antibacterial properties and it will prevent the growth of these microbes. Now along with that, why is it that the microorganisms are growing in the first place? Because normally at times there's a lot of moisture as well. There's a lot of water content or moisture in this grains, right? Which is why water is necessary for growth of all these microbes and ultimately they tend to grow. Which is why sun drying, so before we store any of these grains, we will have to dry it in the sun for a few days so that they are completely dry. And this prevents the growth of microorganisms. Now along with this we see that you know storing it in metallic bins and sacks are very good but having proper storage spaces also is very important which is why having granaries right which are large spaces where we can accumulate right they're like storehouses where all the sacks of grains can be stored or of course apart from that we can also have it in silos right so silos are large metal containers wherein we can store these grains and keep it and again also protects it from any unwanted you know pests or insects trying to attack it and if it is sun dried well it will not allow for the growth of microorganisms yes so here's a quick question for all of you now at this point i request you to pause this video and you try to answer it yourself right so the question here is large scale storage of grains is done where is it done in farms jute bags metal bins or in silos take a minute pause this video try to answer it yourself and finally if you've answered go back and play the video and then you will know the answer right and of course we know that the answer is silos because large scale you know storage of grains is done in silos and granaries so with this of course we've understood the whole ideology behind cultivation of crops but we know that agriculture is not just about cultivation of crops but it's also rearing livestock at a large scale and we call this process as animal husbandry because over a period of time there has been an increase in population which also means that there is increase in demand for animal products which is where we see that animal husbandry is the practice of rearing and of course taking care of animals at a large scale to obtain food products from them. So we practice cattle farming because cattle provide milk. We do poultry farming because pol uh, in poultry farming we rear birds from which we can obtain uh, you know eggs and meat. And of course fish farming or fisheries wherein we see that we rear fishes at a large scale to obtain meat. Yes. So one fun fact for all of you is that we get cod liver oil from fishes which are rich source of vitamin D. And of course we know that milk is also extremely nutritious followed by which eggs are a rich source of protein. So in our diet we observe that animal husbandry play is necessary because a lot of food products are obtained from them. So with this of course everybody we come to the end of this video. So quickly to summarize we learnt about what was harvesting, how we can do harvesting right and we also learnt about how we have a combine or a harvester which helps us do this. Now of course along with this we learnt about the process of threshing and winnowing. Then of course we learnt about what were some of the storage challenges, what are the different ways of storage right and we learnt about animal husbandry towards the end. So here's a quick homework question for all of you where in the comments of this video let write a short note on what is storage and what is harvesting in two two sentences you can tell, let me know what is the need for storage and what is the need for harvesting so with this everybody we come to the end of today's video now if you enjoyed the way i teach and of course all the teachers teach on the channel do not forget to be a part of the live classes that we take now of course as you see this is the timetable that we follow so you can take a screenshot of this maybe keep it in your room so that you know that between 6 to 8 we come live on the channel and especially for grade 8 students we come live at 8 p.m with all of your academic classes along with level up sessions and finally understand that best quality content and preparation for olympiads happen here so do not forget to hit the subscribe button on this video because baiju 6 to 8 has always got you covered so if you did enjoy this particular video please do not forget to subscribe to this video and do not forget to like this video i will see you all soon but up until then everybody take care lots of love and bye bye Bye.